It's another hectic day at Mute Records in London, England. Depeche Mode wants some more pocket change. Right, so who's running Mute? You are, you globe Johnny mogul. By winning a 120 minutes naked power grab contest. As president of Mute Records for a week, you'll fly to London to lunch with Depeche Mode and hang out with Alan Wilder producing Nights or Ham. Do the legendary Manchester club scene, then high talent to Hamburg to watch a racial record and pop over to Paris to catch in spiral carpets. Come and see us play in Paris. You know you want it. Take it. Just have one of your lackeys send your name, address, age, and phone number on a postcard to 120 Minutes Naked Power Grab Contest, P.O. Box 899, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10101. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Into the future. Minutes. Welcome to London and the third and final leg of MTV's 120 Minutes European Tour. Together with our Naked Power Grab Contest winner Kirk Damarel, we'll be hanging out with Depeche Mode, Knights of Ebb and Wire, checking out videos from Elvis Costello, Fishbone and Jesus Jones, and a whole bunch of brand new alternative music videos right here in the next 120 minutes on MTV. 120 minutes. Welcome back to 120 Minutes and the World Headquarters of Mute Records here in London, England, where our Naked Power Grab contest winner, Mr. Kirk Damarel, is hard at work as Mute President for a week. Kirk, um, there's some papers for you to sign, and there's three things for you to do this afternoon. Um, first, lunch with Depeche in half an hour. Um, then um, you're going up to the studio to see Nights for Ebb, and Wire upstairs in the studio waiting. Okay, thanks. Tell them I'll be up there in a little bit. Okay. See ya. Kirk, you seem kind of busy. Are you introducing any American-style management techniques? Oh, yeah, Dave. I've fired everybody. Or just about everybody. <laughs> Kept Joe. Well, you're going to have lunch with Depeche Mode. Mind if we tag along for some free food? Sure. Okay, right here, the latest video from uh, Jesus Jones. This is International Bright Young Thing. Kind of like Mr. Kirk Demerol. It's the third and final leg of the 120 Minutes European Tour. We're visiting with Mute Records in London, England, and our Naked Power Grab contest winner, Mr. Kirk Demerel, who is acting president for a week of Mute Records. Uh, Kirk, what's next on your schedule? Oh, oh, a lunch with Depeche Mode. We better hurry. Sounds like my idea of a Naked Power lunch. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're having a spot of luncheon with Martin Gore and Fletcher of Depeche Mode. What was the most interesting delicacy you came across uh, food-wise on your World Violation Tour? It's a bit, uh, bit of a blur, I mean. I remember the, the, uh, the tour before. Um, we played in Eastern Europe and we forgot to change our rider. And we still had things like, like you know, uh, samosas, vegetable samosas, like an Indian dish. And they obviously didn't know, Probably never clue what it was. They didn't know what it was. We just got like, a bunch of pastry with some vegetables, like you know, a packet of vegetables in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> thick. And uh, we got them every well, night. <laughs> they were making the effort, at least. Was that real grueling, your World well Violation tour? Was it a grueling experience, or has this tour thing come quite naturally now? I think uh, it's got uh, easier over the years. You know, we've got a sort of really smooth, efficient team now. So it's... Um, we looks after a bit better. Yeah. Violator went double platinum in the States. Why do you think it was that album that really pushed you over the top? It's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, you can't put your finger on it. No, I mean, uh, I had a, sort of a few good singles on it, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you really can't tell, you know, if you had this... I think it's a culmination thing as well, you know, you have to work at it. Yeah, you know, I think it, it could have been any one of the last three or four that just, you know, went over the edge, but it just happened to be this one. Seems like you have a lot of support, especially in California. What do you think that is? Beats me. I mean, again, we can't really, 
Again, we, we did a lot of concerts there early on in our career, but it's like the same in New, New York. I mean, you can't, you can't have all your sort of uh, home dinner and honours a bit earlier. I don't know, can't really tell, you know. We're quite good at surfing, we always attract crowds on the beach. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> an alternative <laughs> marketing uh, strategy, you just surf, you know, <laughs> All right, well, let's have a look at the fifth video of Violator. This is Halo from Depeche Mode. Halo from Depeche Mode, the fifth video of Violator. Which was the most fun to shoot? That, that was the least fun to shoot. Why? It was the last one. And it was, uh, by then, it was during the tour, and we was, uh, we were totally whacked out and sort of Anton, you know, just need you for two days, you know, the usual thing, you know, so... And so actually, but, Yeah, but right. actually was, was really pleased that video in the end, you know, it sort of seemed to suit it. I don't know, what was the most... The best for us, was to enjoy the silence. Yeah. Because it only required 15 minutes of our time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the best for me, yeah. do you know about the uh, Strange 2 compilation that came out? There's actually uh, another... Call me in, Martin. Well, there's, a, there's another video, apart from those five that you mentioned, I think it's five or six, it was uh, clean. And uh, basically, I just had to spend the afternoon kissing some girl in her underwear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was about the best video I've ever made. <laughs> An arduous task, I'm sure. Well, we're here with Depeche Mode in the offices of Mute Records in London, England. Stay tuned for the second 60 of 120 minutes, the third leg of our European tour. Into the future. 120 minutes. Welcome back to 120 Minutes, the third leg of our European tour here in London, England, with Fletch and Martin Gore of Depeche Mode. What do you guys do on your time off, apart from having these, <coughs> these good splash-up lunches? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, after the last tour, we decided to take a break for about a year, but um, we were um, um, teased out of retirement by being asked to do a track for the new Vin Vendors film. So we, we we did that over about three or four days, and then now we're back for rest. Possibly going to the studio at some point next year. They'll be going to the studio. <laughs> they will, huh? Yeah. Kurt Demerale, of course, the <laughs> president of New Records for a week. We don't know it yet, but Mike is an offer. Mike is an offer. <laughs> what are you going to make him do, Kurt? Um, a new album. Yeah. All remakes. No, I'm just kidding. It's a great listen. You're talking about an album a week and a tour every weekend, but why? Isn't that the way it usually is? <laughs> These American style management techniques. Falls in the How do you guys relax? Like, well, what do you do on your time off? Funny enough, it doesn't seem to be very relaxing, to be honest, no. Where we're just sort of like going out, sort of getting domesticated and stuff, you know. Having babies, dogs, and etc., etc., you know. Having babies? Yeah, well, uh, there's a few rumours. <laughs> a few rumours, which will not be confirmed at this point, right? Okay. How about a new Depeche Mode record? Got any plans for that? Well, I don't know. We'll have to ask him. <laughs> when do we want, when do you need one out? Um, the end of the year, at Christmas time. Well, you might be in trouble with that. You might be in trouble. <laughs> no greatest hits, a real help this time. Well, I don't think we're planning to go into the studio till, uh, till January, at least, you know. Probably a bit later. And and it, it all depends if he comes up with the songs or not. You know. and there's no box set thing still. The box set. I think we do might be doing releasing some of our old because uh, over here a lot of our early singles haven't been released on CD. So I think that's a as a plan to release them with a sort of a box set as well. So that should be quite good. Call it megaphone. Why? <laughs> I just think he's got a great, title. Great, great, great title for it. Daniel could be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at an older Depeche Mode video. This is Behind the Wheel. Toronto's 13 Engines with King of Saturday Night. Up next on your Sunday Night Alternative, Depeche Mode's Alan Wilder on what it's like producing Nights of Ebb. <laughs> Minutes. Welcome back to 120 Minutes and Conk Studios, where Knights of Rab are recording their new album. And Alan Wilder is one of the co-producers. Alan, uh, is this the first time you've produced another band? Yes, it is, yeah. I've done um, a couple of remix projects for people, but I've never 
that she'd been involved in producing an album before. And did Knights of Rave approach you? Yeah, they did, yeah. They insisted rather than uh, approached. <laughs> but we were good friends. We, they toured with us quite a lot, and they're on the same label as us in England, Mute Records. So we got to know them very well, and we get along really well. So it wasn't, you know, that, that problem had already been overcome before we started. So we knew that we'd be able to get along, and they, they yeah, they just came to me and said, you know, we'd, we'd like you to do it, and um, explain their reasoning, and whatever, and I thought it'd be interesting for me, you know, and something I can learn from, as well as hopefully try and help them. I know that you do, you're, you're actively involved in some of the Depeche Mode producing work too. Do you think Depeche have much in common musically with NYTSA? Um the way we approach making music is quite similar. When, once we get into the studio with electronics and uh, what have you, you know, and using a lot of synthesizers. But really, I think in the end, there's quite a big gap between the two groups, you know, because the songs dictate the direction of the group in the end. And the song, the way they write songs and the subject matters and whatever are very different to the way we in Depeche Mode write songs. So in the end, the, the, there's not that much similarity, I wouldn't have thought. It's a lot more aggressive Nights of Rev stuff as well. You got a lot more work to do on the Nights of Rev? Well, we've done most of it. We've done um, all the programming, really, and we're, we've recorded three songs at this stage, and we're on the schedule. We've got another six songs to record. And then we've mixed a lot of the end. You know, I, I think we've done the hard work, most of it, you know, in that we've sort of bashed them all into shape. All right, well, good luck with the rest of the album. And here's an Orlando band called I Love You with Hang Straight Up, new on 120 Minutes.